can you tell me the what are the difference between the sanity testing versus smoke testing so what are the various differences let us let us go by one by one the smoke testing which is nothing but we are doing at a very high level approach and we will be doing this test for a, any given application that is very crucial as well sanity testing this is a type of testing which we are doing for a particular feature of the application normally smoke testing can be done by both developers and testers but sanity testing will be done only by the tester before we are taking for further testing and smoke testing we will also treat as a end to end testing because at least we will taking at least some crucial number of test cases we will be testing as part of the end to end and uh, here so we will be testing only the modified areas with manual and automated way also we can do the smoke testing sanity testing here more of a ad hoc testing we do with or without test. smoke testing so we will be using the test management tool to document these test cases in sanity testing because most of the time we do not have any test cases or scripts then there is no chance of documenting any, any of these tools so normally the smoke testing will be done as part of the initial build test to validate the build whether it smokes or not in sanity this is also a part of smoke tested build. once a build has been given with the smoke tested then which will be tested part of the functionality whether it really works or not these are the some of the very important differences between sanity testing versus smoke testing then they may ask you in the interview can you write the requirement traceability matrix or can you explain what are the various parameters or columns will be there in the requirement traceability matrix and they may ask as well uh, what is the purpose of requirement traceability matrix what are the benefits of requirement traceability matrix requirement traceability matrix you will be use, using just to ensure that whether all the test cases which we have written, all the test scenarios we have written, everything should trace back to the user stories. That would guarantee we have written all the test cases. That would guarantee we have done a good amount of testing. So if you can see here, right, for every given user story, there is a user story description, then associated test scenarios and associated test cases. And again, what is the status of that? With this requirement traceability matrix or RTM, we can easily identify the overall coverage, what is the overall failed rate, what is the pass rate, which all the user story we are really covered, which area is very buggy. Everything we can identify as part of this requirement traceability matrix. Then the 18th is what is regression testing? So regression testing is again another type of testing this is also one type of testing we will be validating the product or an application whether it works as expected or not especially which we do as part of the code update or a code improvement that is when we do regression means if some functionality has been added newly or to the existing one or updating the existing feature that is the time we do regression testing and in regression testing we will be testing in terms of stability in terms of the functionality of an existing features as well as the updated one or whatever the new features which they added by doing regression that would guarantee the risk will be mitigated Next question is when to use regression testing. So normally we do regression testing when updating to the existing functionality or when new feature is getting added. When new feature getting added, that is when we do regression testing where there is a change in the code, especially if the existing code, if there is a change in the code because they're trying to resolve particular issue or a particular defect, 
then there is a change could be happening in the code as well. That is the time also you should use regression testing. And also if there is an, any optimization which they have done in the source code for the performance improvement, that is also time you should uh, perform regression testing. And any new fetches are getting added, new functionalities are getting added, any changes into the configuration. These are the time you should perform regression testing. Then the 20th is why regression testing is very important. What is the reason why you really required to perform a regression testing? With the regression, developers get the early feedback and they can respond very faster as well because as they change the code, when our regression testing will be executed either manually or automated way, it can catch very easily any issues with the application. And also, it detects new defects early in the development life cycle. And because we are doing, we are able to catch the issues early in the game, it reduces the cost of the maintenance as well as fixing issues. Especially regression testing will be very beneficial. Especially regression testing will be very beneficial if the application or a feature goes frequent modification. Can you give a few tips to perform the regression testing? Especially when we are performing a regression testing, you should do these strategies. First thing is we should do is identify the changes in the source code because we should not go and execute all thousands of test cases here. What we should do here is we should identify which feature it is modified, which functionality which is modified, which code has been modified. Then based on that surrounding test cases only, you should pick for executing for regression testing. We should also see is there any change in the prioritizing the requirement. If something happened there as well, then you should do a regression testing there. And also you should also ensure that entry and exit area also you should define and you should perform your regression appropriately. Can you explain us? What are the various techniques which we use as part of the regression testing? So, the various techniques are uh, complete regression. So, basically we have uh, three different techniques which we have here to perform a regression testing. One is performing complete regression. In this technique, regression testing is applied to the, all the application, all the sort, completely we will be doing as part of the complete regression. Normally, when to use complete regression is when there is a huge change in the core features, when there is a huge change into the application code base, then that is the time you should perform a complete regression. Then regression test selection. Here we will be doing as part of the impacted area where there is an impact, only that kind of test cases which we identified and which we will be running as part of the this regression testing. Then the third type of regression testing technique is test case prioritization. Test, the test case prioritization will be done based on the test failure rate, based on the business impact and what are the functionalities which are getting impacted more often. These are the criteria which will be used to prioritize the test cases, which is a third important technique for a regression testing. This, what are the different types of UAT? The different types of UATs are, there are five types of UAT which we can talk about here. The first one is ALPA testing. So ALPA testing is nothing but, again, this type of testing which we do as part of the development environment. Again, this will be done by the internal team, either tester or a development team. That is all about ALPA testing. Basically, this will be done on top of the development environment by the internal team, done by either tester or a development team. Then the next type of UIT testing is beta testing. The beta testing here, testing will be done on the client environment, the client environment and also when we are trying to do beta testing, this will be done most probably by the client team or a end user. Then the third is 
contract acceptance testing. The contract acceptance testing is nothing but whenever the client signs the contracts, there will be a certain criteria will be defined. Clear quality criteria, clear uh, entry and exit criteria will be defined as part of the contracting. So the same contract specification which will be used to test this contract acceptance testing. So the next is regulation acceptance testing, especially certain projects like pharmaceutical companies on these kind of applications or products which has to adhere to the certain government regulations, certain board regulations because there are a lot of legal and government uh, regulations will be there where we will have to follow and any guidelines which they are given if we are following our testing as part of that regulation process is all about regulated acceptance testing. Then the fifth is operational acceptance testing. This kind of testing all workflows to be tested, trainings, security validations, maintenance and related aspects. Everything will be testing as part of this operational acceptance testing. These are the some of the overall different types of UAT. Next question is, can you tell us what is the difference between manual testing versus automated testing? In manual testing, we run the all the test manually and we will be finding the issues. But in automated testing, we will be running all the tests using automated tools and tools will find us the issues for us. In manual testing, normally the human errors are very high because, because of repetitive in nature, there are higher chances that human, humans to do error. But in automation, the chances of error is very minimum because, because of the using of the tools. And manual testing is very much useful when there is a validation is required from the human, especially usability perspective where I wanted to validate the user experience of the application or ad hoc where I do not have a test cases or I do not have a clarity then I should perform on the ad hoc or exploratory testing. That is the time only we can depend upon a manual testing. But in automated, if you identify the tool and with the test cases and tools will execute the test cases and provide us the result. The fourth difference is manual testing is very much time consuming compared to automation testing. In automation testing, by click of button, your test cases will run in an unattended mode where not much efforts will be involved. Everything will be run in a different machines and it will publish the results. Only testers will do analyzing those requirements, analyzing those test results and they will guarantee that there is no false failures out there. Based on that, they will publish the results. Then the fifth uh, important difference is low cost with the short product life cycle, especially Manual testing will be done if there is an application or product which they implemented within two or three which in, which within uh, two or three months if, if they wanted to implement the uh, testing uh, in a shorter duration then manual testing is very much beneficial. But if we are trying to use automation testing means then uh, there should be a long run project should be there and many releases should happen at least a minimum two or three years of uh, tenure should be there for a given application. Otherwise, investing the money on the automation testing, which will not fetch a good return of investment. Then the higher uh, error in the executions due to monotonous, as we discussed earlier, because things it is very repetitive in nature, things are in very, very much repetitive in nature, the higher chances that human can ignore certain things. But in automation, uh, there will be an high accuracy and it can be done in a very quicker manner. 